Hey, hey, you guys, Stockton here from Better Than Data. And in this video, I wanna show you how we can use a Google Sheet, BigQuery, and Looker Studio to create really fast reports. And also, this is how to get your data from Google Sheets into a BigQuery table. So we're actually gonna do this setup on our Better Than Data site because we're gonna do a little thing where we have our lead magnet here which is this conversion tracking um, setup. We give you the data layer, we give you the prepared, pre-built GTM container, so you can quickly get your conversion tracking set up for WooCommerce, Thrivecart, and Shopify. Um, but we want to kind of do some backend lead tracking with this. So we're actually gonna send a webhook from this form to Google Sheets, and then we're gonna upload the Google Sheet into BigQuery, and we're gonna do that on it as a, as a external table inside of BigQuery is what it's called, and then we are going to visualize that BigQuery table inside of Looker Studio. So let's jump right in to do that, and if you do want to get this um, prepared GTM template, um, go ahead and come over here to check it out. So, Let's uh, jump in and do this. So the first thing we need to do is go to our convert box and we're going to tell it to send a webhook. So I'm gonna to go to form settings, we're gonna to go to integrations, we're gonna add an integration for webhooks, okay? So now where do we want to send webhook data when this form is actually submitted? So we're gonna send it to a Google Sheet. Now Google Sheets has this really cool functionality where the, you can add on these extensions. And one of the extensions is a webhook endpoint URL thingy. So if we type in here, webhook, webhooks for sheets, we get this guy right here. So webhooks for sheets, you install this. And when you go through their process, they give you a URL that can be used as a webhook endpoint. So if I copy this and we come back and we paste this in, we can even hit send test and it will send some test data from ConvertBox to the Google Sheet, which should then populate here any second now. Oh, it's right here, came in right there. Okay, with all of that webhook data that was sent in the webhook and uh, has the information that we want here. So pretty simple already just with that, what we've been able to do is say when someone fills out this form, send a webhook to Google Sheets, which Google Sheets can then accept that webhook and um, start storing all of the different lead data for us without us having to do much. Now, of course, the tools make that easy. So tools that can send a webhook are obviously gonna be much more user-friendly for this, like faster, um, instead of having to do like a Zapier to sheet or anything like that. Um, so that makes it super nice. And we can even test this. So if I just hit submit, on this, we should be able to come back here and see if my test submission comes through. Actually, you know what? I don't think it will because that page was already loaded. Then I edited the convert box and then I submitted the form without refreshing it. So let's actually come back and try it again. So now that we've made the change, let's go test two here so we can confirm our theory. So now we'll hit submit. Now we can check the sheet. You should see my email with test two appear here um, for everything to have worked as it should. Should just take a second. All right, there it is. So one thing I forgot to do actually was actually inside of ConvertBox, come back and hit save up here. So I had to uh, go and quickly do that. But then um, the details are showing up. So we have all of the fields that we would want right here inside of our Google Sheet now. So the next step would be to take this data from Google Sheets and how can we bring that into BigQuery? So we do have to kind of get into BigQuery for this. Um, but it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple actually. So from Google Cloud, we're gonna go in the top left, we're gonna choose BigQuery here, and we're gonna go to SQL Analysis uh, Workspace. Okay, from here, you can choose your existing, uh, you can choose an existing data set or you can create a new data set. We're gonna create a new data set in this case. So let's go create data set. 
And what we're going to do is give this a name. So I'm just going to call this leads. And we're going to choose just a location and hit create data set. Okay, now that this data set was created within our uh, group here, we have it called leads. What we want to do now is create a new table. And this is where we're going to be referencing the Google Sheet right here from this BigQuery. It's going to be called an external table. So create table from Drive because it's a Google Sheet. So it's all part of the Google Drive system. Select the Drive URI. So here we are from here. When we want to find where it says edit, and we want to grab everything before that. So we're going to go like this, come back and paste that in. File format, we're going to choose Google Sheet. The sheet range is going to be um, the name of the sheet plus the columns that you want to capture. So it's going to be, if I copy this like that, we're going to paste that in. Then you do exclamation point and we want to get A through H. So we're going to type in A and then this and then H just like that. And the table we're going to call it is convert box leads. Um, the table type is external, right? Because we're grabbing it from Google Sheets. This is the range for that specific Google Sheet. We want to choose auto detect. And then because we do have headers here, we do have uh, row one is the headers of our table. We want to tell it to skip that when it imports. So that's not like an actual value. All right. Now that we have our ConvertBox leads table here, um, we can see that it actually pulled in all of the different columns as fields from the Google Sheet, which is super nice. So from here, if we hit query, and let's just say in a split tab, just to show it over here, what I wanna do just to demonstrate is do a star. So select all from, and it already is giving us our table name here, we can remove the limit, in fact, because there should only be two records. <laughs> so let's hit save or run, and it should return us our two records that we have. Now, the thing about this external table is every time you run this query, it's going to um, like refetch everything from the, the table. So that could be good, that could be bad, depending on how much data you actually have. One thing you could do is set this up as a scheduled query so that it uh, fetches it just like every hour. And then you use Looker Studio to connect to the scheduled query instead of this live query. So you're not querying it every time someone reloads your Looker Studio or anything like that. The other thing here is that there's a lot of null values. So what we want to do is add a condition to say where, and then we can say email is not null. And we just kind of type it out like that. And then if we hit run again, it's going to re live query the Google sheet, return all of the information. But now we only have the two records because the rest of it um, was null and we don't want the nulls. Okay, so this is simple enough. We can now um, create a view out of this so that we can connect it to Looker Studio. So we have our little query here, super simple. Uh, we just select all and where email is not null. And then what we're gonna do is hit save as view. In the same project, in the same data set even, let's go right here under leads. And then let's call this new view table. We're gonna call it convert box leads clean. Go ahead and hit save. And now you'll notice over here on the left, we have our original ConvertBox leads, which is the, um, the source external table. So every time this table is queried, it's actually querying the Google Sheet, which is pretty neat. And then we created a view off of that with our modification where we said email cannot be null. Now what we want to do is actually in Looker Studio connect to this view that has cleaned up that data for us. So let's come over to Looker Studio. And of course, what you're seeing here is GA4 data. So this is a prime example of where the GA4 data, just the connector doesn't work. It gives you these API quota limits, which is another good reason to move things into BigQuery uh, to do this. But for that, for now, we won't get into GA4 
and the API limits and quotas there. Let's add in a data source for that new BigQuery table that we just came up with. So we're going to go add a data source. We're gonna say BigQuery. We're gonna to go to our better than data project. We're gonna go into leads data set, and then we're gonna choose convert box leads clean. We're gonna hit add data source. That'll take just a second to add in. Boom, there we go. And then here we are under, for example, the executive overview, we can begin to bring things out to create visualizations. So for example, where do we wanna put this? Let's just throw it right up at the top here. This right now is giving us a chart with all of the emails, but instead, what if I want a count, just a count of all the emails? I could change this to be a scorecard. And then here we would have a record count. So we can click the metric and call this leads. And now we have a super simple metric that is telling us how many leads have come through that convert box, gone to the Google Sheet, into BigQuery, and then Looker Studio is now connected to BigQuery. So this is gonna be really fast. It's going to be um, updated every time we refresh the report, and it's going to be the live data that we want and uh, a nice little overview. So instead of having to rely on some of these like GA4 API limits and things like that, we created sort of a different pipeline uh, to get data into our Looker Studio. So hope you liked it. That was a good example of how to get data from Google Sheets into BigQuery and then into Looker Studio for super fast reports.